Thank you for joining us for the WinZero public information session to discuss the French and Bush student accommodation DA. My name is Gay White. The other speakers will be Tanya Clancy, Clive West and Sarah Keynes. I acknowledge the Gandangara and Thorowal people as the traditional custodians of this land upon which we meet, and I pay my respects to their elders past, present and emerging. If I could just briefly tell you a little bit about WinZero, we're a community organisation and we're working with as many of the environmental groups in the Southern Highlands as we can. So from the wildlife people like Wombatized through to the climate for change, our young people. Uh, we're a registered charity. The reason this development came to our attention is through uh, Wombatized, um, because they're involved with the rehabilitation of the animals at Frencham, and also it doesn't comply with our Winter Caribbean local environment plan. And I could just remind you, this map shows you the devastation of the 2020 bushfires. We have lost so much, so we must protect the unburned. Frencham lodged amendments to their plan uh, just before we go to the Land and Environment Court and it's open for public submission at the moment. So let's have a look at what the latest plan says. Frencham wants to build six student cabins for 72 students and two staff cabins for four staff members. It's a multi-purpose hall, with staff offices, kitchens, outdoor barbecues, laundries, student toilets, staff toilets and storage. The cabins will be in a sort of a circular formation around a centre, uh, amphitheatre and um, fire pit. The accommodation is primarily for sleeping and private study. Students are generally going to go across to the main campus during the school hours or within the multi-purpose hall. All dining will occur on the main campus and it's going to be used during term time but on holidays it might be rented out to other groups. Pedestrian access is via the uh, little red bridge across the Natai River. The vehicular access is via the range road from the southern entrance. Unfortunately, Frencham has chosen a site that is in a bushfire flame zone. So all of the um, RFS building regulations come into play. So if you build in a flame zone, you have to have an extensive asset protection zone. This map shows the asset protection zone, both the inner and outer. You can see where the cabins will be and the multi-purpose hall. The inner protection zone is 50 metres past the edge of the buildings. The outer protection zone extends a further 17 metres past that. The western side is a little bit narrower because of the riparian zone. The RFS rules are very prescriptive in terms of access. Your roads have to be four metres wide with a metre cleared either side. It has to be a new access road coming in from Peyton Street. They have to replace the bridge with a new concrete bridge. Everything has to take the weight of a fully loaded 23-ton fire truck. I'll post a link to the RFS conditions in the chat, but the roads have to be all weather, turning circles, passing bays, vertical clearance. The inner protection zone has, can only have 15% trees and shrubs. It has to be cleared near the buildings. None of the trees can touch The outer protection zone, can, you can have 30, up to 30% uh, vegetation. So the claims by the school that this is a very low environmental impact and they'll revegetate the area is against the rules of the RFS. The area has to remain mowed or grazed in perpetuity. 
The services for such a development are extensive and the excavation will be um, do an enormous amount of damage here. There's got to be a sewerage uh, tank, 3,000 litres, and a pumping station. The rainwater is collected from all of the cabins and it goes into a 50,000 litre underground uh, tank. The, um, there's a filtration uh, pump room. There's five hydrants uh, around the cabins. There's a bioretention tank to try and catch the water before it all rushes into the Natai River. But with the, local, the rain events that we've been having lately, it will just completely overflow all of that. The power and water has to be all underground. That will run along under one underneath, underneath the road. So all of that has to be dug up before the road is rebuilt. This flood risk was just added in the latest amended plans that the Frenchman has lodged. Um, the Natai River is a Category 1 riparian zone. And we're seeing massive runoffs now with these um, latest weather weather events, flood events. Uh, have a look at for the footage of what happens to the Mittagong Pool when we have one of these flood events. And the council spent six million dollars trying to repair that. All structures have to be flood compatible building components, and they have to be able to withstand forces of flood, water, debris, and buoyancy. One of the main objections to this location that the school has chosen is it's in a critically endangered ecological community, the Southern Highland Shale Woodland Forest. It's listed as critically endangered with the Commonwealth and it's threatened, listed as threatened with the state. Why a school that's looking for to select sites wouldn't have avoiding damage to their critically endangered ecological community on their premises is um, a mystery to us all. Our other main objection is the incredible damage it's going to do to the wildlife sanctuary that's been built there over the last couple of years um, with Tanya Clancy's rehabilitation of these orphaned animals. These red dots show you where the wombat burrows are, but the wombat burrows underneath is a really complex group of chambers and hallways and all sorts of things. Uh, Tanya will speak more about that later in the program, but those wombats have to be fenced out of that development site and relocated before the building can start. But you can't relocate wombats, they'll die. Frenchman claims there will be minimal environmental damage, but this proposal is fundamentally inconsistent with many aspects of the Environmental and Planning Assessment Act, the State Environment Planning Policy, Koala Habitat, and the Winter Caribbean Local Environmental Plan. The particular irony is that they are claiming it is for an environmental education facility. To make way for uh, all of these cabins and asset protection zones and roads and bridges and everything else, 249 trees will be cut down. And imagine digging up the roots and all of that that are in the way of roads and all around the cabins where it all has to be accessed by fire trucks. There is in addition to the trees, a lot of thinning and undergrowth will be removed because the asset protection zone has very strict rules on the vegetation density. Of those 4.2 hectares, 0.63 hectares is direct clearing and the rest is all of the, all of the thinning of vegetation which has to be um, inspected. Uh, in perpetuity, it has to be mowed or grazed. You can't ever revegetate that area. Tanya Clancy will now take you through the background of the Land for Wildlife program that she's been working on.
Uh, Winifred West, who was a founder of Frencham, believed strongly in the natural environment. She felt that in order for children to be educated properly, they needed to be part of, immersed in, and understand the natural beauty of the environment they live in. French is part of what's called uh, the Land for Wildlife group. We have over 100 acres of natural bushland, this area here called the Upper Holt, and that's connected via the Nadi Creek down into this area which we call the Lower Holt. We're really keen to work with the local environmental groups to establish and maintain a native corridor that allows animals to move from the Gibbagunya Reserve up here, down through Frencham, down through the Nadi, and then down eventually into the Nadi National Park. Most recent times we've been very lucky to be involved with uh, a local environmentalist who's very keen on supporting wildlife on the Frencham grounds. And the girls have been involved in the rehabilitation of wombats, as an example, but also other native parrots, birds, and possums. Hello, and thank you for letting me speak tonight. My name is Tandy Clancy, and since 2017, I have been teaching students in the Lower Holt at Frencham in support of the Duke of Edinburgh program, as well as the Jamison program. Frencham gave me permission to rehabilitate at least 10 grazing marsupial, 12 arboreal marsupials, two monotremes and a number of avian orphans, including water birds and parrots. These orphans were local and their species were already living within the lower holt. The pupils were part of a rehabilitation process, learning about native animals and their needs. I chose to rehabilitate animals in the lower holt because it is a healthy and highly functioning ecological system. The bird species in the lower holt include the glossy black cockatoos, which are one of the more threatened species of cockatoo in Australia and are listed as vulnerable in New South Wales. Over the years I have photographed, rehabilitated and observed many avian species from the Pacific Bassa Hawk through to varieties of parrots and down to the smallest of birds like the superb fairy wren. I invite you to click on the link in the chat to download the full species list that I have personally observed in the Lower Holt. Here are just a few examples of how the school differentiated itself on the basis of its unique wildlife program. The students who participated in the program said it was life-changing and where else would they have had such an opportunity to engage with our amazing native animals? At no time ever did Frencham consult with me or any on-site conservationists about the Holt project and the bush hut accommodation, yet they continued to lead me to believe that I could trust in Frencham's environmental responsibility, to quote their advertising. I would never have rehabilitated any animals if I had even the vaguest hint that this was Frencham's plan all along. Frencham was so lucky to have platypus on their grounds. These are the oldest mammals on earth, the monotremes, along with the echidna, and of course the second oldest mammal on earth is the wombat. Through the Jamison program, I've been teaching the children the survival needs of all these animals, and that's of course what a habitat is. And it's such a finite space, this space is very precious because it does sustain a myriad of lives and it is a truly functioning ecosystem. Platypus need privacy. They often found sunning themselves and they actually walk on the ground. Now, when they feed, they feed on nymphs and tadpoles and zooplankton, which are, of course, um, bugs or amphibians. And they won't survive with land clearing. Land clearing is the biggest threat to platypus and when you have land clearing you won't have your dragonflies that lay the eggs for the nymphs for the platypus to eat, you won't have your frogs and the cool climate frogs um, hibernate in the ground about a metre deep and if they don't have a flourishing ecosystem they won't be able to hibernate and then reproduce and therefore um, keep the web of life sustained within the lower halt. 
this is such a finite this is such a finite space where animals occupy this area that's thriving from the lowest of the microorganisms to the high-end animals such as the hawk. If you remove any of this, then the, the balance will be gone. And it's just indicative of how such a small space, if left to be wilded, left alone from human encroachment, these beautiful creatures can survive. And not only that, it's part of our program to re-establish more of the native animals that would have lived there so the biodiversity is greater. We can't risk this biodiminishment, which is actually what's happening when it comes to human encroachment. Wombat Burrow is like a Brady Bunch house with split levels, bedrooms, hallways, communal chambers and perhaps a nursery. The babies from three to five kilos are no longer in the pouch and depend on the burrow for safety and they will not come out so they often get buried alive as do most of the wombats. Some or most will die in their cages from capture myopathy. An area with abandoned burrows needs to be found and it takes three months for them to be accepted in a new area. That's of course if we can find new areas. You need thousands of dollars worth of cages, trucks to transport them, sedation. It's almost impossible to keep mum and babies together. It is a fallacy to fence them out from a development site as you need fences at least a metre deep. If any survive, which is unlikely, they try to return to the site and redig their burrows. Some wombats have been known to come back from hundreds of kilometres. Here are some examples of territory bites with anaerobic infection, which is fatal. Wombats suffering from being forced to go into burrows that are flooded and full of silt, as well as suffering disease due to stress. Don't be fooled. It is a myth to think that any of these relocated animals will survive. It's so important to continue this program that began in 2017. And there are so many agencies in the public sector that are willing to help Frencham because they know how valuable this riparian zone is. And if Frencham would move their site to a more appropriate site with cleared land, then we could continue this invaluable program. It's something we must continue for the future of our wildlife because we know all around us their homes are being destroyed constantly, absolutely constantly. My name is Clive West. I've lived in the Highlands for 20 years and in terms of background, I'm a retired government lawyer and I've been locally engaged or involved with the environment um, in a number of ways. I'm, work, I'm involved in the local bush care group, I'm deputy chair of Win Zero, and I'm on the committee of the Southern Highlands Land Care Network. I'm also on the council's environment committee, a community representative. As a retired government lawyer, I have a particular interest in the legislation and the law surrounding uh, development applications such as this. And interestingly, one of the objects of the Environment Protection and Assessment Act is to improve uh, community participation, to, to provide increased opportunity for community participation. And that's relevant on a number of fronts in this case. For a start, the council deferred the DA for the express reason of giving Frencham the opportunity to consult with the community, which had expressed strong concerns with the DA. Frencham refused to consult. Uh, we wrote a couple of letters, um, they got nowhere. 
So we're facing fortress friendship. And that's, that's quite disturbing from my point of view because they're, they're the custodians of a particularly vulnerable piece of land. And they also should be guided by the philosophy of Winifred West, who was the founder of the school. And she was not only concerned with the environment in a holistic way, but also with involving the school in the local community. Now, the, the board has failed on both of these fronts, I'm afraid. This aspect of for, fortress Frenchum seems to me to be a case of a competitive sporting culture to win. It's all about winning and to use their privileged might to do so. They have a great deal of resources available. Um, they have uh, experts on hand which they're not utilizing. They're bringing in experts that are really the darlings of the mining companies. Uh, how to avoid the rules rather than really to give effect to the sentiment or the policy behind the rules. The most disturbing aspect of this whole DA is its negative impact on a primary biodiversity corridor. Now we're facing climate change and for survival of species you've got to have connectivity which means connections through habitat corridors between the different major habitats and this location on the side of Mount Gibraltar is in fact a midway point between the coastal national parks and the inland national parks and it's listed by council as a primary biodiversity corridor notwithstanding Frencham's assertion, or rather the biodiversity report presented by Frencham, which says that the area is not a published biodiversity corridor. This is completely avoiding and evading the primary issue. It's a fact recorded by council that it is a primary biodiversity corridor. The other aspect of the Environment Protection and Assessment Act is its um, concern with protecting biodiversity. And it does this with a specific aim of protecting threatened ecological communities and uh, particularly um, uh, riparian zones and, and, and the like. <clears throat> the French site that they're proposing actually brings all of these into play. It's a primary biodiversity corridor and it's uh, got a threatened, uh, endangered ecological community on it, which is listed at the federal and state level. And so this is really, um, first and foremost, uh, a consideration to be taken into account by the court. The Southern Highland Shale Woodland is an endangered ecological community because of its scarcity and its importance in, in the biodiversity of the Shire. We're down to less than 5% of its original cover in the Shire. There, there's actually only 2,000 hectares left in the entire world. It's core koala habitat that we simply cannot afford to lose. As we've seen, there are alternative locations, and the nearest and most amenable, in my view, is the bush pitch. Why you would choose something in the bush itself, right in the centre of it, uh, is, is beyond me. I just cannot see why Frencham is so adamant that this is the very best place for it, when it's clearly not. Particularly disturbing is the recent lodgement of um, documents which show the full scope of the works. And it's absolutely enormous. There's going to be massive excavations for retention tanks, uh, all sorts of filtration systems, uh, this is in addition to the fire regulations requiring clearing of the forest for roadworks and <clears throat> rebuilding the bridge. This, this is going to become a major construction site. It's not going to be slipped discreetly into existing bush. It's going to destroy the habitat. Frencham still has choices, but if it continues on the path that it's on now and insists and obtains approval for this particular location, it's going to alienate itself from the local wildlife carers, the local environmentalists, and the battle is not won with that approval. It'll continue. I just implore the board to think wisely and carefully and choose the alternative location. My name is Sarah Keynes, and I welcome this opportunity to speak to you tonight. I'm an old girl of Frencham, and we sent our two daughters to school at Frencham. 
I've lived in the Southern Highlands for over 30 years and 28 of those years I've been working with another French and old girl on the bush care program restoring the Southern Highlands critically endangered shale woodland on Mount Gibraltar. Um, the Lower Holt is an ex and the Upper Holt are an extended part of this forest community. Frenchamu have a unique heritage in the Holt, both the Upper and Lower Holt. This asset sets Frencham apart from other schools. I can't think of any other schools that have a campus that encompasses such a treasured asset. This forest system has been undisturbed for over a hundred years and though it's imperfect, it is valid. It's imperfect because it has weeds in it and radiata pines are a weed and there are quite a lot of them in there. They are not a plantation. They can't be surgically removed in a clean operation. They're self-seeded trees interspersed with the shale woodland species that remain in that forest community. Plants are communal creatures. They depend on one another. They depend on the whole of their complex forest system. And that goes right down to the soil. What we can't see underneath the soil is just as relevant as the wombats that we can see on the top of the soil. Because the lower halts undisturbed, the soil remains intact, sequestering carbon. It's full of microbes and insect life, the leaf litter and the organic matter that's collected on the soil is active and alive. The bark of those pine trees is complex and has a lot of crevices in it. So there would be small creatures sheltering in there, creatures that we don't even know are there. Tiny bats, micro, micro bats, little uh, glider, squirrel gliders, insects that the birds can eat and a lot of tiny birds as well would be dependent on those what has happened in that complex forest. If you destroy a functioning system like a forest, it'll take another hundred years to establish itself again, perhaps even more. Anyone who knows anything about horticulture would know that you must start from tube stock when planting a native area and that tube stock struggles in soil that's been disturbed and turned upside down, compacted by vehicles. All the clay comes to the top and the topsoil is destroyed and lost in the erosion caused by the activity plus the weathering. How very fortunate Frencham is to have this living laboratory as part of their school campus. Additional to the forest is a waterway the waterway goes from the very top of the upper halt. It comes from springs and weaves its way down as the Natai River down through the lower halt. What a unique opportunity for study, for children to be able to monitor the health of this waterway and to see that the water leaves the French and property in a better condition than it entered the property. There is opportunity to study the wildlife that would be accommodated in this waterway and to see the interaction between the forest, which is a sanctuary, and the waterway. Not only, it's not only the mental health of the girls at Frencham and the staff there. Fren Mittagong is now a closely inhabited town with hundreds of neighbours bordering the school the trauma that those people will suffer from the noise and pollution and degradation of their beloved environment of the town during the months, if not years, it will take to demolish and rebuild <clears throat> the chainsaws, the diesel fumes, the trucks, the noise. If you've seen one tree cut down, you'll know what it would be like to live through losing 249 trees in your town. Frencham, there's still an opportunity to stop this damage, both to the school's reputation and to the wildlife. We ask you to stop, to withdraw and withhold and to consult with their community before taking any more steps. Thank you for listening. The revised plans from Frencham have just been lodged with barely time for the council to get submissions 
closes the day before the Land and Environment Court starts. Uh, please send in another objection um, to the council and remember that it doesn't comply with our Windsor Caribbean Local Environment Plan.